Assalamu alaikum. Now let's start again. We will start our second main point of our lesson, which is the blood flow within our body. Now the blood flows through the heart in a specific pathways as you see in front of you. I know it looks a little bit complicated, but I know also that it will be a piece of cake once you practice the pathways with me using this plain heart diagram that I included in your PowerPoint. Now, we will start with the right side of the heart. Now the deoxygenated blood will be collected from all parts of the body. The lower, let me just use, it's deoxygenated, so I will use the blue color. Now, as we said, it will, this deoxygenated blood will be collected from the lower parts of the body and also the upper parts of the body. Now, the poor oxygen blood will enter to the right atrium. Here, it enters to the right atrium. And also from here, it will come out and enters the right atrium. Passing by toward the right ventricle, from the right atrium, it will pass through the right ventricle. Once it passes here, so the tricuspid valve will close, as we say, to prevent the blood from going backward. Now from the right ventricle, the blood will be pumped to both left and right lungs. Now here, from the right ventricle, the deoxygenated blood will move to the left lung and also to the right lung. Now in the lungs, the, the carbon dioxide will be taken once, once the blood reaches the lung. The carbon dioxide will be taken and the oxygen will bind to the red blood cells as we studied in the previous lesson, if you remember respiration. Now, the blood actually is oxygenated, so I will use the red color. Now the blood will return back from both lungs as oxygenated blood. So it's returning to the left side from the left lung here. Okay. And also here from the right lung. It's going in this way and it will enter from here. Now it will enter the heart from the left atrium. So this is the left atrium passing toward the left ventricle through the mitral valve, as we said also before. Of course, once the blood will pass to the left ventricle, so the valve will close. Now from the, the left ventricle, the, the oxygenated blood needs to be distributed to our body parts. So the blood or the oxygenated blood will be pumped to all upper and lower parts. So it will go from the left ventricle here. It will pass through this part going to all upper body parts and also to all from here to all lower body parts. As I told you, the circulation is not that complicated once you practice it. So let's watch this blood flow animation 
let me show you this animation before we complete the lesson and also you will find it you will find this animation link in your powerpoint so need to focus so deoxygenated from body parts to the lungs then it comes back from the lungs and going to all body parts let's resume back to our powerpoint back to our powerpoint as i told you this is the link for the blood flow and hopefully it's not that complicated anymore once you look at the pathways of the blood now let's go to the main circulations the main two pathway circulations so pulmonary circulation we have the the main two cir uh, circulations here i will show you the first one the first one is called pulmonary circulation because it's actually between the heart and the lungs only so pulmonary circulation occurs between the heart and the lungs the oxygen poor blood enters the lung so this is the oxygen poor blood the blue one it will enter the lungs then the excess carbon dioxide and water will be expelled in the lungs the blood will pick up the oxygen and here the oxygen rich blood returns back to the heart so this is the pulmonary circulation the second circulation is called systemic circulation because it's between the heart and all other body systems or all the organs inside our body now the oxygen rich blood will go to all organs and to all body parts as you see so it's from the heart to all our body parts then the oxygen poor blood returns back to the heart so the pulmonary circulation will start here the two pathways helps to maintain so they help both of them they work toward maintaining the stable body temperature so this is help in maintaining homeostasis as we keep saying uh, by the end of the lesson once you study the lesson i wish that you go through this map concept try to answer it it's like checking your understanding and i provided you with this next slide with the answers so you will be sure from your answers thank you for listening and i appreciate your dedication in case of any doubts comments or also feedback please contact me whenever you want thank you again